Hi, Tom here. Welcome to Alley Picked. Because people know that I'm an alley picker, they give me things. Things that they don't want but still have value. They think that I can either restore it or make something cool out of it. Like this old pinball machine. Or here's something that someone recently gave me. It took me a while to figure out what it is. See if you can guess. Any ideas? Well, I'm gonna tell you what that is, but you're gonna have to wait until the end of the video. Now today, another friend of mine gave me this. It's an old broken stained glass, bent up, hanging light. Now, I hate to see it end up in the trash, so I'm gonna take apart some of the glass and use some of this glass that another relative gave me and make something cool out of it. I'm gonna make this simple stained glass bird panel. Now, if you're a beginner, this is a perfect project. Or, if you're just interested in seeing how it's done, we'll keep watching. I've got this book of simple stained glass patterns where I found my bird. I made a copy of it on my printer. Some printers have the ability to enlarge or shrink, which comes in handy. To remove the glass, I sacrifice one of the pieces, which makes the others easier to remove. I'm modifying the pattern because I don't have a piece of glass this large since I'm using scraps. I also like to number each of the pieces and then take a picture which makes it easier to remember where all the pieces fit. When cutting the pattern I use regular scissors on the outside but foiling shears on the inside cuts. Foiling shears have a double blade. They leave about a sixteenth of an inch space between the pieces. This space accounts for the foil and solder in between each of the pieces. I almost forgot. I also like to write down on the pattern which color that piece is going to be. Here's something else I forgot to do before cutting the pattern. The glass I'm using for the background has lines in it. I'm drawing on the pattern the direction I want the lines to be. This way the grain or the lines, they're all going in the same direction. You can see that here as I place the pattern on the glass. I'm using contact cement to glue down each piece. After cutting all the pieces, the edges are sharp and sometimes jagged. Every edge of every piece of glass needs to be ground down a bit. Now, if you don't have one of these glass grinders, you're probably not going to get very far with your stained glass hobby. Before we do the next step, which would be to apply the copper foil, what I like to do is check all the edges that I've cut and ground. Now, as hard as you try, it's really difficult to get a perfect fit between each and every piece. Now, remember, it doesn't actually have to be perfect because there is going to be a space between with solder filling the space. However, I do like to take this time to go over the project and see if there's any glaring errors that I made. Then, once I do that, we can apply the copper foil. The copper foil is going to go around each and every piece, which will allow us to solder the pieces together. Knowing how to work with stained glass is a wonderful skill to have. First of all, there's not a lot of people who know how to do it. Number two, you can make amazing projects out of glass that give you great satisfaction. Number three, it's not really a very expensive hobby. Number four, it will pay for itself at Christmas time and birthdays. You can make great 
handmade personalized gifts for people that don't cost a lot of money. And that's what I'm all about. Cheap. Soldering can be challenging, especially as a beginner. I'll give you a few of the tips I've learned. Flux. Brush. Two types of solder, 50-50 and 60-40 lead tin mix. Why two? I'll explain shortly. First, I'll tack down solder spots randomly in order to hold the bird parts together as I solder. For the first side of the panel, or the back side, I'm going to use the 50-50 lead solder. This has a higher melting point. The advantage is that when I solder the front side with the 60-40 lead, it won't melt through the back side. As a beginner, this happens a lot because you tend to solder slower. Keep your iron hot, clean, and keep it moving. You can only go so far before it starts to cool down a bit. Give it a few seconds for the temperature to work back up after you use it. I don't know, maybe every 30 seconds or so? Make sure your solder is solid and doesn't use a flux core. Now don't get that confused with a flux capacitor. This lead U-channel edging I'm using has a tendency to get loose. It usually comes rolled up, so it's a good idea to stretch it out. Put one end in a vise, the other in a good grip pliers and pull. This will cause the lead to stretch and get stiffer. Now we're good to solder the end and wrap it around the perimeter of the bird panel. Don't let the soldering iron touch this lead for more than a split second or the lead edging will melt. So I just took soap and water and cleaned off all the flux and solder. Now I could just hook a chain on here and call it a day. However, I like to go one step further and apply this black patina. What this does, it's like magic. You put it on the lead and the solder and it turns it black. It's a chemical reaction that changes the silver into black and I think that really looks nice. So let's do that now. Now after applying the patina and rinsing it off thoroughly, it looks like it's done, but it's not. There's one more step that I like to do to make this thing extremely clean and give it a shine. Well, there it is. My little stained glass bird is now complete. This video lasted a little bit longer than I intended because I often struggle between giving you enough useful information to make this yourself and keeping the videos interesting and short. I realize that most people only watch two or three minutes of a video anyway. So thanks for watching Alley Picked. Oh, hold on. Remember at the beginning of the video I showed you what that thing was? Here. Did you figure it out? Well, here's a clue. This symbol here is a musical symbol. This is probably from the 1930s. It's an old piano stool or what's left of it. So keep your eye out for an upcoming video on a piano stool restoration. Now, as I was saying, thanks for watching Alley Pick, where I always make something cool out of junk.